Hello students, welcome back to the new lecture on classical mechanics and in continuation we are going to see the place on the uh, equation for angular momentum that we got in the last class and on the left hand side we have the angular momentum vector and then on the right hand side you have a 3 by 3 matrix multiplied by the omega which is the angular velocity vector. But the question or the difficulty that we had in the last class is that on one side you have a vector quantity represented by an arrow on the right hand side you have uh, a vector i mean a column vector and a three by three matrix so how are you going to write down this is what i'm writing i'll write down that l okay and then superscript mu i'll write down like that that is what is going to represent the angular momentum which is equal to the moment of inertia capital i with the two uh, scripts mu nu multiplied by the omega nu we are interested to write like this so that is the uh, that is the explanation that i would like to give today uh, but however not now that's why i've written finally okay uh, at the end of this today's class you will be able to uh, recognize and appreciate the way in which you have written and the point is that you have uh, uh, the angular momentum l with a superscript doesn't have an arrow you don't have a vector arrow anywhere and capital i represent the uh, matrix with the two two of the indices so let us not worry about this and therefore let us uh, understand how the subscripts and superscripts can be written down so once you understand how the superscripts and the subscripts can be written then it will be easier for us this is known as the index notation so uh, what do you mean by the index notation that is what i am going to explain and for that you consider the standard a vector the standard a vector that you know uh, which is written as something like ax ax times that is component times the unit vector the same uh, standard vector that you write ay times cy plus az times az the small az is unit vector and the capital A's are the component so that is what i am writing you have two things are there one is the unit vectors capital the small letters ax ay az and you also have the components so let me write down uh, accordingly like this ax comma ay comma az and that is one second thing is that you have components which are written down in uh, capital letters ax comma capital ay comma capital az so this is the information that is there in the capital a vector and we are going to decompose decompose means separate the unit vectors from the components that is why i am writing like this we are going to separate them that is what i mean to say and the suffix that you are going to use you know x component y component and then the z component we are going to remove that so how we are going to remove that's what we are going to see the x comma y comma is that that we are going to write down let me write down that we are going to put the number in place that so i have to write down x okay not the ax i'll erase this so x should be given the label one y will be given the label two and z will be given the label three so you understand what i mean to say that if there are three directions are there you don't call them by x y z you call them by one two three that's all about it you don't say it is x direction you say first direction instead of y direction you say second direction instead of z direction third direction so if it is the case then what will happen to your capital a vector based on this yeah so based on this idea of one two three what will happen to the capital a vector it becomes simply let us write down that it did it becomes a1 comma a2 comma a3 so that's all about it and uh, which means that the the unit vectors are deleted from the situation that's why i'm writing here without referring to the coordinate system so this is an interesting and important point in the index notation the index notation is a notation in which you don't uh, you don't bring into the coordinate system so that is why i'm saying without referring to the coordinate system okay so the advantage is now we can see that these three elements can be written down as ai okay where so ai is enough now that is what we are trying to say i'm putting a box and saying that ai is enough no need of uh, anything and you simply say that i equal to 1 2 3 so this is an advantage of putting the 1 2 3 instead of x comma y comma z so the point is now clear that what is the advantage of uh, now uh, removing x y z and putting 1 2 3 
so i'll write down this as this is the main topic i mean the main uh, concept involved in the index notation so what is the main concept is that x direction y direction z direction this kind of names will be uh, replaced by an appropriate numbers so let me write down that i'll write down x comma y comma z will be replaced by 1 comma 2 comma 3 and uh, in addition to that we will not i mean we will delete the uh, information we will delete the information about the coordinate system which means that okay uh, you can always apply a particular coordinate system whenever required and let us uh, let me call that as an equation number one the the first box at one and then we'll come to the next point so this is the starting point and once this idea is clear the the rest of the thing is going to be quite simple so tensors are not complicated as i already told you that it is fairly simple provided uh, you learn in a step by step manner okay so let us say that this is the first equation where you got the idea of putting an in index there now we will come to the terminology okay uh, a proper terminology is required otherwise you don't know what, uh, why these people are using these kind of terminology so the conclusion i'll write down that the conclusion is this the conclusion is that whenever there is a free index whenever there is a free index free index it has that many number of components okay that is the meaning the, so the meaning is what i am trying to write down so that whatever i explained uh, that can be understood in this one line okay it has that many number of components so what do you mean by that sentence uh, let us again write down the ai capital a suffix i and suppose if i say that with i equal to uh, 1 2 3 etc okay with i equal to 1 2 3 that means what is the meaning is the a vector has five components a1 a2 a3 let me write down a4 and a5 so instead of uh, three components for the euclidean now we can say it is five components so what is the advantage now the advantage is that you don't have to work with the three dimensional case you can you can go to five dimensional case or 20 dimensional case that's what i mean to say so th so this is important that uh, by writing the number i equal to 1 to 3 you, we can always uh, work with five dimensional or any higher dimensional five dimensional this is, is an example you can simply uh, convert or you change the five to any number and that's it you are ready to work in higher dimension this is the power of the index notation okay so the power of the, the power means uh, what uh, what is an advantage of the index notation is that <clears throat> whenever there is a free index is there they, it has that many number of components if this idea is clear then uh, the next thing you can write down the second thing is that the number of indices i'll write down that the number of indices indices means how many index that you have that is known as the rank of the tensors so these are some technical word what are the technical word is in the first point i have explained what is a free index now i am explaining rank of a tensor it is quite simple how many index is there you just count i am putting a ai means i is the only index i is the only index right therefore we will say that it is a uh, rank should be one so that's all about it so when i when you when i say that ai ai has only one index i therefore it is a tensor of rank one either you say that it is a tensor of rank one or you say that it is a first rank tensor so first rank tensor you understood okay similarly now we will move on to how to write the uh, a second rank tensor let me uh, go down and then uh, take an example of how to write with two number of indices that means two index either you say indexes or okay the indices you can write so that means we are going to use something like i comma j anything you can use i comma j is just a it's only a symbol so uh, most of the time i j will be used otherwise uh, otherwise sometimes greek letter can also be used so i'll write down mu or uh, something like new mu new can be used typically okay you can use anything but in general to start with people start using ijk and similarly mu etc now let us take an example of dot product uh, so that uh, you can understand how the two indices are coming into picture so the dot product how will you understand is that you consider the simple uh, unit dot product unit vector dot product uh, since the relation is known to you let me write down quickly uh these are the unit vectors in the cartesian system 
because all the unit vectors are perpendicular uh, i am writing zero and here i am writing one because uh, it is the same unit vector ax dot ax ax means i i vector a a y means j vector that's all about it so let me complete nine equations you know that nine of them will come so a y dot uh, a z equal to zero and then the three more equations will have to write down okay so this is x with x that that should go in the top that's what i'm showing it's okay anything anywhere it can be there and now we are going to write uh, z with x so a z then dot then you have ax equal to zero and uh, similarly you can write down a z dot a y zero and a z with a z itself is one that's all this is the uh, basic information very well known to everyone on the cartesian coordinate system what we are going to do is we want to convert so let me write down in some kind of green color ink we are we are interested to convert this kind of a notation to a tensor notation that's all about it so tensor is not something new okay that is what i am trying to say once again it is just a different style of writing okay where we change all the x y z to 1 2 3 the idea is same right x y z will be converted to some number 1 2 3 then what will happen to this nine equation you remember are, uh, are you able to see all the nine equations okay x dot y x dot x y dot y y dot x etc all these nine equations can be written down into single equation i'll write down that all these nine equations or nine expressions all these nine expressions can be written down as a single equation that is why it is advantageous and we will call this as a tensor later so let me write down that ai so ai then you have a dot product then you have a aj and then you can now fill it with whatever number that comes but i and j is what is going to take the numbers one to three so i'll write down i can take one to three not only that j also can take one to three it's also both of them so therefore i and j both of them will take all possible values one comma two comma three that's fine but what about the right hand side of this equation the right hand side of the equation is either zero or one see zero is there or one is there so either zero or one means what is that you already know that it is a Kronecker delta so i'll write down that it is a delta ij and that's all so you you have written all the nine equations into one equation and of course delta ij you already know but let me write down the definition delta ij equal to one if i equal to j otherwise zero that's all that is the meaning that we am trying to write down the point is to be noted is that i and j will take the values one comma two comma three so this is the index notation <coughs> so now uh, the the index notation will become clear as we are using okay you are using only one of them earlier now we, now two indices are there so now i will write down that this is the index notation for all the nine expression index notation for all the nine expressions that you have now there is something much more interesting let me therefore write down that what is much more interesting is that the delta ij itself can be written down this index notation so that is that one i will write down now what is more interesting is uh, in addition to this one this this particular uh, dot product delta ij itself can be rewritten so let us see how to rewrite can be rewritten like a matrix like a matrix uh, where from the matrix come that is of course it is visible we'll let us see how it is visible let me put the bracket properly okay and uh, how you can fill the matrix elements is that uh, if you know the standard methodology you can write down how did you how do you write the capital a a11 a12 a13 this is the idea so you know how to write 11 1213 same style you write down in this case but only thing is delta now so i'll write down delta 11 delta 12 delta 13 and then you fill the rest of the thing you fill that means what that means delta 21 delta 22 delta 23 etc now once you fill this and uh, now you know the definition for the delta so now you can fill the values actually so what is delta you already know Kronecker delta it is one uh, delta one to you know zero so uh, since the definition is known to you i am quickly filling it out 
so finally what happened is that the the kronecker delta that is delta ij is now looking like a matrix that is a conclusion i'll write down that conclusion uh, the the so called kronecker delta kronecker delta is now a 3 by 3 matrix is a 3 by 3 matrix but very important in in three dimension that is very important in four dimension it becomes 4 by 4 so that is the point to be noted in three dimension how do you know it is three dimension means i equal to 1 to 3 j equal to 1 to 3 so our conclusion is that it is a second rank tensor that is the important point i want to tell because two indices are there you see how many indices are there i am putting a circle i j i j is right there are, there are two indices are there and therefore it is a second rank tensor so uh, no, uh, at i think to this the, to this extent you got an idea about uh, first rank tensor and second rank tensor the board is now full uh, let let me go somewhere i'll first find an empty place then we will discuss okay maybe that is the place where you can start so now you got the idea about the one rank tensor and two rank tensor now let us consider dot product uh, consider the dot product because whatever is already known to you like a standard vector if you if you make a transition from that to tensor everything is very simple there is nothing new now tensor means nothing difficult it's quite simple so how do you write a dot product let us write down in 3d a dot b equal to ax bx plus ay by plus a is at b is at that's all and what is our job now index notation index notation means what x y z will be replaced by 1 2 3 so that's all your job remove all x y z and put a 1 2 3 there so let us write down that this expression therefore becomes ai then a uh, possibly there is a dot and then it is going to look like that but later we will see uh, later we will see that the dot itself is not required so maybe i will write down that if you want so there is a dot there this dot itself is not at all required in the index notation this we will see okay after finishing this expression so that you will feel more comfortable okay come to the first term etc now we can write down as a1 b1 plus a2 b2 plus a3 b3 so we can now use a summation okay because three terms are there let us put a sigma sigma is the summation okay even that is okay those three terms i already explained so let me come to the Uh, summation. Just put the summation there, and then say that y i b i, and the in, the summation will run over all possible values of i, where i takes the value one comma two comma three. Now this is very important. This is this concept is very important. Let me write down what is the summation that I am going to write. This is known as the Einstein convention. So I'll write down that Einstein introduced a convention. a convention so that okay einstein introduced a convention so that the the sigma in the equation what is that sigma sigma means you know the summation can be removed that means you don't have to put the uh, sigma the big sigma you don't have to put that is the idea or that is a convention einstein has proposed and that is known as the einstein summation convention so i'll write down the concept then i'll explain the repeated index means summation that's all this is the einstein statement repeated index means summation so einstein says that don't put any sigma don't that means no need of putting any summation symbol even then we will understand that it is summation that is the point how do you know how do you know that is a convention convention means it's some kind of understanding how do you understand okay how do you understand that there is a summation is that is that the index will repeat that is important so you have to observe where is the index okay there is a repeating is there what is the index and which will repeat if there are two indices are there the number the i will repeat itself j will repeat 
that's what i am writing the index will repeat two times he said there are not check it out you see now you check it out ai bi how many times i is coming it is repeating two times that's what i am saying okay here the index i is repeated twice if it is repeated twice then the summation symbol itself is not required you delete it okay so let me therefore uh, after deleting the summation i will write down so what happens is after uh, deleting this our dot product will become simply uh, ai bi now you see the dot is missing you don't require dot okay and that is fine but what about the understanding the understanding is important so i'll write that here the side note that note that dot is not at all required okay note that uh, i think not i think english there is not not okay in no, t i will delete note that okay no dot is uh, yeah now it is correct no dot is placed okay not only that no vector symbol is required you see that vector symbol is also not there nothing is required even then the meaning is clear okay summation is implied vector is not required dot is not required even then everything is clear so this is the advantage of the index notation but you have to tell i equal to 1 2 3 because that is the one which is the uh, dimension whether you are talking about two dimension three dimension okay so now i will what are the advantage that you are having that the first thing is that let me write down the advantage the expression a b i the expression a b i is valid for any higher dimension so this is very important because simply you can move from the three dimension to higher dimension it is, it is valid for any dimension again the board is full uh, maybe i'll i'll move to another place and then write down the entire thing advantage the advantage is ai bi that is the expression is valid even for higher dimensional mathematical spaces that is what i am trying to write higher dimensional mathematical spaces this point i am emphasizing because if you are going to use the vector symbol like a dot b you have to you have to stick with only 3d okay four dimension five dimension you cannot go that is what that is what is an advantage which means that let us write down a1 b1 plus a2 b2 plus etc etc plus a n b n you can go to n dimensional n dimensional mathematical space therefore this is better than so in what way this is better means it is better than a dot b notation is be it is better than a dot b notation that is our conclusion and therefore it is an advantage so now we are seeing uh, in what way index notation is advantageous and we are going to call later all these index notations or tensors that's all about it so tensors are nothing new uh, everything is familiar to you only thing is that notation is changing okay let me give you example if you, you can write down three because two is over right now i'll write three ijk so ijk three are there therefore i will say that it is a rank three tensor ij is two k is one more is there okay take another example epsilon then i can write down ijk so this is also another example and another example of rank 3 then uh, you can write down uh, two two example delta ij because this is already known to you so let me write down delta ij is a second rank tensor delta ij is same kronecker delta and uh, the here the point to be noted is that you can write down the suffix up or down so i am writing another delta ij which is also a second rank tensor the difference is that you can write one of the index up or one of the index down doesn't matter for the time being so that is why i am writing all possible combination like bj i am writing down ai is up in both the cases uh, there is only one index therefore i will write it as a first rank tensor either you say first rank or you say tensor of rank one tensor of rank one that's all so uh, both of them are fine then you write down another uh, example 
probably you can write it with some standard notation a i j because earlier i have written delta right that's why i won't write with a so a i j is a second rank tensor see in this particular case a means any delta means you know kronecker delta so uh, whether it is kronecker delta or any anything is fine so it, it is only an arbitrary similarly uh, you can write any number of uh, any number of indexes okay so delta means only kronecker delta there is a special name for the epsilon let me also write down later i will explain what it is it is known as the levi civita tensor okay levi civita tensor it is a third rank tensor uh, there is nothing special there it's just taking some numbers okay uh, uh, just like you know just like kronecker delta levi civita tensor will take uh, uh, 1 minus 1 and 0 and there are totally 27 elements are there in the three dimension how 27 will come i will write down it is a 3 by 3 matrix like that three matrices are there so total becomes you know 27 because there are multiple matrices uh, this is known as layer of matrices okay let us consider the derivatives now so a possible derivative yeah derivative operators uh, uh, the simplest derivative operators are like gradient divergence Okay, these two things are quite simple so let us start with something like gradient so gradient you know that it is ax unit vector dou by dou x plus ay times dou by dou y etc third dimension also you write down now what is that we want to do uh, as usual you know what to do we have to separate the unit vector and component in the very beginning that's what we did right unit vector should be removed from the system and then component should be separately written down that is the idea about the index notation so let us do that then the operator will look like uh, you have a dou by dou x dou by dou x means components then you have a dou by dou y dou by dou z so that means components are written down and then we will remove x y z and put a 1 to 3 so as usual x y z you remove and then put a 1 to 3 so x1 then x2 then x3 now here uh, there is a point to be noted about this uh, it is not x to the power one okay so that point i will write down so these things are superscripts one two three uh, this is not power okay these are superscripts okay and not okay and not these are not these are superscripts and not powers so that it will be clear for you and coming to the x yeah, x is a generic variable and that also i will write down uh, generic means anything it is not necessary that you allowed to write x you can write anything else also so that point should be clear but whereas in the standard notation you see i will comparison i will write down here uh, in the green color i will write down for comparison in the green color the the standard notation x is the x direction okay whereas in the right hand side that is not a x direction that is generic variable you can use anything you like so that that kind of distinction should be clear to you in the in the standard notation it is very particular to the uh, it is very particular to the 3d cartesian system so i'll write down that it is very particular or specific to the 3d cartesian system x means i'm talking about the meaning of x whereas the the right side thing is generic so therefore let us make a uh, let us make a conclusion what is a conclusion means the gradient operator is given by okay therefore no no i will take white color the gradient uh, operator is given by So you write down the standard expression for the gradify. So gradify is dou phi by dou x plus dou phi by dou y plus dou phi by dou z. So that is the gradient. So now we are going to use the index notation. So what is the index notation? You have to be care. Now you have to think. One is that putting index one to three. Second thing is there is a summation. The two things are there.
yeah so this is now the, what you understand from here is that dou phi by dou xi when you have it represents that it's a vector quantity let me finish the expression for divergence because that is these things are quite familiar to you yeah once this is clear i will tell how, now how will you write it is dou e i divided by dou x i so once again uh, what is the important point is that we don't require summation so when you write a few of these expression you re you realize that this expression there is no need okay there is no need of the sigma symbol sigma symbol means no the addition is going on there that is not required why it is not required because the index is repeated twice the index is which index means i the index i is repeated twice so the the concept of index is also clear and the summation is also implied but there is a point to be noted here that i will write down uh, what is the point is the index should not repeat uh, uh, three times and all so that point also i'll write down the index should not repeat three times one time it can repeat no problem two times okay but three times no so that is what i am trying to say okay uh, how one times will come how two times come that is clear but three times will not come it, then it's a mistake uh, these are clear now now what is that you want to do with these things so therefore our interest in learning the relativity uh, for the time being is that we have to learn something about the special relativity okay that is the that is the reason why we are learning so let me write down that the special relativity now this the topic of special relativity uh, to start with is based on the idea that you already have on something like lorentz transformation oh, so let me write down the basic idea that you already have some idea like there is a space and time and then the, the concept that we need is that it's a space time so that distinction i will now write down okay so according to the einstein uh, the the so called the mathematical theory developed by einstein space and time that concept you know was used by newton it is you see there is a two words are there but space time is a single word einstein used the single word for space time but in the newtonian mechanics people used two words that is they are two separate things so that is the place where uh, einstein said that uh, no 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 let us not use the space and the time concept we will use space time as a single object so what is the distinction let us write down space if by space it is x comma y comma z oh no no not t z x comma y comma z so three components are there and then for a time will be a separately t will be there so this is the idea but einstein said that that is not the idea but space time means time comma x comma y comma z all the four put together in a single mathematical uh, space that's an idea so let us write down this this is 3d that time will be separately one dimension that is how you talk about the three plus one dimension in the case of the newtonian mechanics okay this is newtonian but einstein what he is saying is uh, considering three plus one is not good let us consider a pure four dimensional mathematical space isn't it so three plus one is different four is different in the sense that mathematical uh, space name is now changing then it is known as the minkowski space so the mathematical space is given the name minkowski space whereas such name is not there in newtonian mechanics in newtonian mechanics it is just uh, euclidean there is no special name whatever that you have the three dimensional euclidean space it is the same thing so what do you understand uh, from this uh, idea is that purely dealing with the three dimensional uh, space and the corresponding vectors i am talking about usage of the vector a vector b vector etc that is the mathematics that you used to do okay but let me highlight this this is euclidean space and that is a minkowski space and then we have two different time scales okay so uh, the distinction is where uh, uh, you have to pay the attention the historically speaking you already know some basics like the galilean transformation and then the lorentz transformation and the lorentz transformation in fact if you see 
the transformation was obtained by lorentz not einstein okay and the equation contained these three these four variables so this is the place where uh, einstein and einstein's guide okay his guide is actually the name of the guide is minkowski he is a mathematician and that is why the name has come okay the the idea is that einstein and his guide i mean the minkowski they have taken a look into the lorentz transformation equation so what is the lorentz transformation equation that you that you are already familiar with that equation contains four variable t comma x comma y comma z but it is the same equation that was visualized like this Uh, Newton also visualized like this. Okay, t is there, x, y, z is there. That's so that is there. But what is the difference between the concept proposed by the Minkowski is that you should not consider a three-dimensional space together with one separate axis for time. That is the concept here. You have three D space. You have time also. Your time axis is separate axis. That is how you consider the mathematics. Uh, Minkowski, being a mathematician, he said. Uh, why to consider like that? You combine all the four and then say that it is a four-dimensional mathematical space. Technically speaking, technically speaking means mathematically speaking, four-dimensional mathematical space will have completely different mathematical properties when compared to having a three-dimensional space. I am talking about geometric properties. The geometric properties of the three-dimensional Euclidean space will be completely different from. the geometric properties of the four dimensional mathematical space so this is the reason why minkowski proposed that let us abandon the concept of 3 plus 1 and let us have a single entity so that is why i am writing here single entity space and time they are not two different objects you don't consider at all let us rather you consider that it is a single object now how do you visualize this uh, this is a single object actually is that you can easily imagine by taking one or two examples like for example you take milk and then water you take uh, you take 1 liter of milk and then add some amount of water to it and after adding the water uh, can you separate and tell which is milk and which is water you can't you can't separate right you finally see it as a single object right that's what he said when time is mixed in the space time is mixed in the space is something equivalent to water is mixed in the milk now once you mix that you can't uh, Uh, separate and then uh, and then do the calculation like three dimensional algebra separately and one for the time like that you can't do the calculation because mixing is already done who has done the mixing that is already done nature is already there okay nature is already mixed and we are now living in the mixed world only now therefore uh, we will be unable to uh, separate uh, in this particular way by writing 3 plus 1 therefore our mathematics should also be the one corresponding to the mixed space and time therefore space time should be a single entity so that is a concept and the, and the, the direct consequences are there of course uh, that the properties are going to be different and because the uh, properties are different uh, einstein is able to uh, do the calculation corresponding to the relativistic uh, theory correctly i mean correctly means uh, whatever you observe in the uh, experiment that is uh, that is uh, that can be calculated so that is the reason why there is a distinction between the calculation based on the uh, based on the 3 plus 1 and based on the four dimensions so now with this uh, what we are going to do in the uh, tomorrow's class is that you are going to have four variables t comma x comma y comma z and therefore you put a suffix i mean the index i am talking about Put an index and then say that the index will run from one to three four. So the index will run from one to four. That means not from one to three. So and then we will say that uh, this is also going to be a tensor. So the concept is uh, now clear in the sense that anything let it be there, and you lo you only have to put an index there and then tell uh, what should be the numbers ranging for that particular index the index can run from 1 to 3 or 1 to 3 4 or 1 to 3 4 5 it could be any number there is no limitation on that it could be any number so anything that anything that is uh, ultimately coming out by this notation we will call by the name tensor and depending on the geometric properties okay tensors can be uh, classified into some two uh, two types Uh, especially when you are moving to the minkowski space because we are especially interested in this 
tensors can be classified into two types one is known as the contravariant tensor and the other is known as covariant tensor but why this kind of uh, distinction about the tensor is uh, not known to us or we are not interested is in the usual calculation is coming to the coming to the standard euclidean uh, space there is absolutely no difference between contravariant tensor and covariant tensor when you don't have any difference why do you want to keep two names so that is why when you are doing mathematics with euclidean space we don't require the distinction between contravariant and covariant because they are identically same in the minkowski space that means in the four dimensional mathematical space this is not the story the the uh, contravariant vectors will be slightly different from covariant vectors and therefore we need to have the uh, two two names for that okay so whether you are going to call it by the name contravariant vector or contravariant tensor so that is not a big difference because it all uh, ultimately you are going to put the index notation and therefore they all mean the same so we will therefore continue in the next class and then uh, start with this four variables that is the idea and then say that uh, we are going to start with uh, 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 xi something like this we can write xi and say that i equal to 1234 so let us do that in the next class